This tutorial is all about our drinking water, where we get the drinking water from, how it is treated to make it suitable for drinking, why it's important to conserve water, and how we can test for particular ions which are in water using uh, some reagents. As usual, when we look at the specification, that which is in white on these slides is at foundation level, that which is in the purple colour is at higher level. So we'll need to know a little bit about uh, water resources in the United Kingdom, why it's important to conserve water, not just in the UK but across the world, uh, why drinking water may contain some pollutants despite being uh, cleaned, and why some soluble substances aren't removed from water during purification. It's important to conserve water in the UK because our water is chlorinated before sent to our taps and therefore the more water we use the more chlorine has to be manufactured and the more chlorinated water goes into our rivers and seas. By using less water we're using less energy because it takes energy to uh, purify the water and make it fit for drinking and also you'll ultimately save money because most people are on a water meter at home. Thinking uh, more globally, if you're abroad on holiday in Africa and using water there, the water is probably coming from wells. And if it comes from wells, local people have to use water from wells as well. And that means that the more that the tourists are using, the lower the water table falls and the deeper the uh, wells have to be for the local people. In the UK, most of our drinking water comes from one of four places. It either comes from rivers, from natural lakes, from man-made lakes called reservoirs, or from wells or boreholes. Our drinking water might still contain some soluble substances. For example, it might contain nitrates if farmers have used uh, nitrate fertilizers near watercourses from which we get our water. There might be lead compounds in our water from old lead pipes and there might be pesticides in our water from spraying too near to water resources. All of these are soluble compounds and therefore very difficult to remove from our drinking water. So how is our water treated before it gets to our tap? Well the water comes from the reservoir and it's then piped into large sedimentation tanks. Here certain chemicals are added which encourage the tiny particles to cling together, make larger particles which become too heavy to stay suspended in the water and are sedimented. The clear water from above is then piped into a filtration tank where it's passed through layers of sand to remove small solid pieces. Then the clear water with no solid pieces in has to be chlorinated Chlorination is necessary to kill bacteria that might be harmful. In Britain it rains quite a lot and therefore we get our drinking water mainly from reservoirs. However in some countries where there's less rainfall they have to get their water from the sea. But the sea of course contains salty water which isn't fit for drinking. In that case they have to distill the water. In hot and humid countries then there's plenty of solar energy which can be used to evaporate the water and allow it to condense back and be collected but in less hot countries a great deal of energy in the form of electrical energy or fuels has to be used to boil the water up into water vapour and then condense that water vapour to make pure water. So the disadvantage of using this distillation method is it's slow and it needs a great deal of energy to make that drinking water. We're now going to look at the various ions that might be present in water and how we can test for these using various chemical reagents. One type of compound found in water are halide ions in the form of either chloride, bromide or iodide ions. In order to detect these in water we can use a reagent called silver nitrate. If the silver nitrate is added to a solution of a chloride, like potassium chloride, these are the kind of equations we get. If we use potassium chloride and silver nitrate, we get silver chloride, which of course is a white precipitate, and potassium nitrate solution. In terms of the symbols, 
Potassium chloride is KCl. Silver nitrate is AgNO3. Silver chloride is AgCl. And potassium nitrate KNO3. Let's take another example. Let's take this one at the bottom. With potassium iodide and silver nitrate, I'd expect to get silver iodide, which of course is that yellow precipitate, and a remaining solution of potassium nitrate again. And because all of these compounds come from the same group of the periodic table, group 7, the formula of potassium iodide is similar, Ki, silver nitrate, AgNO3, silver iodide is AgI, and potassium nitrate, KNO3. Another substance that we can detect in water is the sulphate ion, SO4-2-, and we can detect this using a solution called barium chloride. In each case, we will get a precipitate of barium sulphate. Barium sulphate is a white precipitate. Whether the sulphate comes in the form of potassium sulphate or sodium sulphate or copper sulphate, we'll get this same precipitate, spell it correctly here, of barium sulphate and it will be the same white colour because it's the same compound in each case. So that's barium sulphate, which is a white precipitate. Let's just take one example of an equation here. If we had sodium sulphate and barium chloride, this would give us a white precipitate of barium sulphate. And the remaining solution would contain sodium chloride. Well, let's look at this one in a bit more detail. The sodium sulphate would be Na2SO4 and the barium chloride would be BaCl2. These are both aqueous solutions which means they're composed of ions free to move. The barium sulphate BaSO4 would be a solid and the sodium chloride NaCl would again be in aqueous solution. In terms of balancing this, we can see we've got two sodiums on the left, but only one on the right. So let's put a two in front. That also sorts out the fact that we've got a chlorine here, two chlorines and two chlorines here. Now let's look at the ions which are in each of these. Sodium sulfate contains two sodium ions and one sulfate ion in aqueous solution. The barium chloride contains a barium ion and two chloride ions, again in aqueous solution. The barium sulphate doesn't have any free ions, so we'll just give that its formula. And the sodium chloride contains two sodium ions and two chloride ions, again in aqueous solution. Now let's look at which ions don't change in the reaction. Well, the chloride ions start off as aqueous chloride ions and end up as aqueous chloride ions, and so do the sodium ions. We call these ones, which don't take part in the reaction, spectator ions. So when we write it again without the spectator ions, we've got a barium ion reacting with a sulphate ion, both aqueous ions, to make barium sulphate solid. And the more usual way would be to write these the other way around, in the correct order, that the barium ion AQ plus the sulphate ion AQ gives barium sulphate solid. So a precipitate is an insoluble solid that's made when two solutions are added together. Here's a past paper question. This question is about drinking water. Washing up liquid can pollute drinking water, but another pollutant is nitrate. Suggest how these nitrates could get into the drinking water. This would be farmers using fertilizers near rivers and lakes. Another exam question, Joe's testing some water samples. He adds silver nitrate and barium chloride to various different water samples and look at the table, it shows the results. Uh, which water sample contains bromide ions? Well, bromide ions give a cream precipitate with silver nitrate. Here's the cream precipitate, so that one would be B. 
Which one contains chloride ions? Again, silver nitrate, this time a white precipitate, so that one would be A. Sample D contains iodide ions and sulphate ions. Complete the table. Well, if it contains iodide ions, that would give us a yellow precipitate. Let's just use the shortened version of precipitate there of silver iodide. And with barium chloride, we'd get a white precipitate of barium sulphate. And water containing sodium sulphate reacts with barium chloride to make barium sulphate and sodium chloride. It says write a balance symbol equation for this. Well, on the left hand side, we're going to have the sodium sulphate and we're going to have the barium chloride. On the right hand side, we're going to have the barium sulphate and the sodium chloride. Then we need to balance it where well, we've got two sodiums on the left, so we need two sodiums on the right, which gives us two chlorines on the right, and that balances up with the two chlorines on the left. That now balances. And there's our answers. As usual, we get one for getting everything in the right place for that question, and one for balancing it correctly. Here's a question about water treatment. Uh, chlorination kills microbes. What happens during the filtration stage of water purification? Uh, solid particles are removed and even after purification the water obtained may still contain some poisonous pollutants suggest why uh, these are very soluble and so are difficult to remove. Seawater is a possible source of drinking water. Describe one way of getting drinking water from seawater. That would be distillation. And using seawater to make large quantities of drinking water is expensive. Explain why uh, it needs a great deal of energy. That would be either be fuel or electricity to boil the water to make water vapour. So in that last question, distillation and a large energy requirement or it needs uh, to boil lots of water or you need lots of heat, something along those lines. Another exam question, water can be tested to identify some of the chemicals in it. Silver nitrates used to test for chloride ions. You get an insoluble solid. What's this type of reaction called? Well, it's this one. It's precipitation. Barium chloride is used to test for sulphate ions. It reacts with sodium sulphate to make barium sulphate and sodium chloride. I think we've seen this question before, but we'll just uh, polish it off quickly. We're starting off with barium chloride and sodium sulfate on the left, that's what we start off with. We're ending up with barium sulfate and sodium chloride on the right. We need to have two of these to satisfy the fact we've got two chlorines and two sodiums on the left hand side. And there's our answers. It's precipitation, the type of reaction, and once again that balanced equation gets us two marks, one mark for putting everything in the correct place and one mark for correctly balancing it.